let's get started. Bilge pumps. The difference between a bilge pump and a gas or petrol powered water pump is that the gas or petrol powered water pump builds and holds pressure in the chamber so it can push water out of, it can push that water from the same if we're using the same hose dimensions higher and lift it he, it can pull it and lift it higher than um, a bilge pump a bilge pump does not build pressure it simply moves water so a 1100 GPH gas powered pressure water pump may be able to lift that water 10 or 12 feet before it loses its effectiveness while the same bilge pump under the same hose dimensions can only move that water maybe 4 meters instead of 10 or 12 meters or whatever no pressure so you got to remember that when you're dealing with this the positive aspects about bilge pumps they are lighter they are more nature friendly they're quieter you're not carrying fuel you don't have to worry about if you're using a, a closed sealed battery or a um, power panel you have less chance of hazardous spills into the water into nature whatever if you're not needing high pressure like running a, a Ventura dredge then these may be the thing for you I use them as you saw in my videos for my fluid box for my uh, my gold hog uh, cleaning multi sluice different things like this the things you have to understand about a bilge pump the first thing you want to calculate is is amps and amp hours all right let's go and look at car batteries a typical car battery will have uh, 60 to 80 amp hours okay 60 amp hours uh, most people most car batteries I think in a typical car uh, run 60 amp hours to 75 amp hours so for the sake of, of argument let's say we're using a 75 amp hour battery that 75 amp hours you're not going to get full use because when you're getting down to the last few hours two or three hours you're losing power you're losing uh, the uh, power to the as the battery drains you're losing power to the motor it's not pumping as much water you're losing your proportional force you're losing your lift a whole lot of things are going on so you never really want to run a battery dry when doing this so if I'm using a 75 volt uh, 75 amp hour battery what I calculate for is 72 hours now a C flow 1100 C flow uses 3 amps if I go to a 2000 it's using 10 amps so I've already went up I've, I've used more amps in theory for more water flow but that's not really how it works because of water weight so you calculate your battery use by the amount of amps and versus the amount of amp hours on a battery always give a little leeway I carry two batteries so I've always got one charging on the solar panels and one not however most summers are about 10 to 12 hours long from sunrise to sunset and if I want to work the full day I'm not going to be able to do it with this battery because at 72 hours I'm running two of these pumps so I'm going to divide that not by 3 amps but by 6 amps and that's going to give me 12 hours that means I've about depleted that pump that battery by the end of the day and if the next day is cloudy it's going to take longer to charge that battery than me using the second battery that I've got so I do not use car batteries what I use is solar battery they're a little more expensive however a solar battery can give you anywhere from 120 or 110 
to up to up to sometimes in this case this is 280 amp hours I run typically a 120 amp hour battery because I find that that's more than enough I'm typically out maybe two to three days Friday Saturday Sunday and I come home Monday to take care of my housework and everything else then I'm back out again Friday so I don't need that much because that's a bigger battery it's more expensive and it's going to weigh a lot more I'm remember I'm trying to keep my weight down but also keep it effective so if I'm running 120 amp hour battery and I'm running this I'm maxing it so I'm using six let's say eight amps an hour that means I've got 15 hours of battery time more than a day's worth of sunlight if I want and I want to keep working after it's dark I don't know why people do that I like to get a little bit of rest after shoveling all day I could swap to my other battery and let this one start charging the next morning typically that's not a good idea you wind into a death spiral because you typically cannot charge it on a solar panel fast enough then you're using it so I could wind up ruining my weekend by running out of battery so I work during the day I rest at the night one battery's charging while the other battery's running if I'm running this battery at regular optimum speed which is uh, 120 amp hours divided by 6 amps 3 amps on each each one I've got 20 amp out I've got 20 hours of work time all right that's almost two entire days that gives me more than enough time to recharge and if it's a bad day I can still extend that battery a little bit more to finish my weekend all right so that's amps to amp hours and calculating work time the next thing you want to look at is your max amps. <coughs> now here we see this is a 12 volt. You can also run this on a 24 volt and everything changes. But to do that, you've got a parallel or whatever your batteries. Then you're having to use two batteries. It's just a pain in the dupa. And you're not getting that much more out of it. Okay, you're extending more energy for actually less return in the long run so I keep all my stuff at 12 volt always check some some of these things are 12 24 volt some are 12 volt only some are 24 volt only so you gotta be careful and make sure which one which bilge pump that you're getting for what you need to do so this is saying at a max draw if I was to move that water all the way up to 4 meters high that means I'm at max draw for my head that means I'm getting probably a, maybe a trickle trickling off of it but it's making that motor work so much I'm drawing six amps and it's only got a five amp fuse if you're not careful you can over pull that pump blow the fuse and you're dead in the water literally because those things are more expensive to replace that fuse than it is just to buy another pump so a thing to remember now we get into head space or max head versus flow rate here we have a 1100 gph pump this is for a c flow different pumps have different parameters always look up for the brand and model that you're using i've seen 3700 gph pumps pull 14 amps and have the same uh, max head as a C flow that pulls 16 amps. So you need to calculate your amps and amp usage versus your battery, and then also look at finding one that's going to, to meet your max head and your uh, uh, flow ratios. Now I know that my sluice is one meter high if I top it off. I know that if I put the flow box on top I've got about one and a half meters that that water has to lift straight up so I can look at this chart 
and at 1.64 meters, which is uh, that's a half a meter, one meter here. At one and a half meters, I am pulling about between about 750 gallons per hour, or about 2550 liters per hour of water. My max is four, is 4. I know that I'm using 6 amps at that. I know I'm using 3 amps here. So that means I'm using about 4 amps. Somewhere right in this 2 meter range, I'm, I'm starting to go up in my amps. So I'm using about 3 amps, maybe 4 amps at a time. So I can calculate my amp usage this way as well. Again, water weighs. So if I'm running this water uh, just along the ground, it's going to pull, it's going to keep, uh, I can move that water a longer distance to have that uh, 1,100 at 4 meters because there's no resistance. Once I start moving that up, either directly up or diagonally, you have to start calculating the not only the height, but the length if you're running it diagonal. That's why I always run mine straight along the ground and directly up. It's easier to calculate. You're not working with as much friction or as much water weight, all sorts of problems. So that's how that works. Always be sure that you're getting enough proportional force by the time it lifts up to come in and over your sluice versus what it actually says. So as you see, if I'm lifting that up onto my sluice, I'm only getting 750 gallons per hour instead of the 1,100 that it says that I've got at 4 meters. If I lift it all the way up to 4 meters, I've got zero. And I'm going to probably burn the motor out or blow the fuse at that point anyway. You, never, you always want to calculate your, uh, your GPH versus your head at 50% of, of whatever it says. If it says 4 meters, you don't want to be using it any higher than 2 meters in all seriousness. Otherwise, you're just asking for problems. So, and why would I use 2 1,100? I could go to a 2,000, but as you see here, those ratios start really messing up all right and I start I'm using more amps so like a 3000 a 2000 uses 10 amps uh, 2500 uses about 14 amps a 3000 uses 16 amps and you would think I'm getting a uh, thousand five hundred and forty five uh, thirty five gallons per hour if I split this between my two hoses which in fact that is not the case. If you look here at my 3000, at, again at that 2 meters I'm only getting 1500. And if I split that between the two of them, that flow's got to go between those, so I'm reducing that even further. So simply having a high GPH does not always give you good proportional force water flow in your sluice. Always deal with this. Uh, uh, the first fluid box, the alpha, the alpha build, you'll see in there I mentioned I'm using the 3,700 but by calculation if I split that I would only need about uh, 2,000, so about 1,000 between each one. And that's why I went down to the 1,100 because I knew that those two gives me uh, more battery power, time usage. It gives me less amp burn, and it will give me better water flow than using a 3,700 pump. Remember, getting a cheap battery, some of those batteries are 42 amp hours for a car battery. Read what you're buying, otherwise you're going to get out and find suddenly you have no power again. And that can be very frustrating. I drive five hours 
sometimes to get to one location, sometimes even 12 or more hours if I'm going across into Switzerland or somewhere. And you don't want to get caught up in that kind of situation, believe me. So, there's a lot of different factors when working with these. Always be sure to consider all of, the, all of those. Your amp use versus your amp hour availability. Uh, your uh, max head versus your actual and your max head versus uh, gallons or liters per hour to what is actually going through based on the height and lift that you're using for that. Otherwise you can find yourself into a lot of problems. I hope this has been uh, helpful, educational, and I'll see you around on the next video.